Okay, so let's get warmed up so we can begin our class. We're going to do jumping jacks for one minute. Ready? Going to do this for a whole minute so we want to be at a good pace. After this, as soon as you guys hear the bell, actually you're going to hear the bell for 30 seconds and we're going to go for another 30 seconds, but the second time you hear the bell, we're going to each grab a tombstone and we're going to do alternating knee on belly or knee on bag with a one-two hit. So we've got 30 more seconds of jumping jacks. Ten seconds. <clears throat> okay, and relax. If everybody could grab a tombstone for me, please. So this drill is simulating the knee on belly position. Uh, we're going to call it knee on bag because our knee is on a bag. So we're essentially putting one knee on the bag and your foot is on that same side of the bag as you are. So uh, let me have... Tom, go ahead and put your knee on the bag for me, please. So, uh, Tom, if you could have your, your foot here, basically. So the ball of your foot is going to be on the same side of the bag as your body. So, uh, Tom, I'm going to have you demonstrate this for us. We're just going to do a one-two punch. That can be a closed-fisted punch or an open hand palm heel, whatever you want to do. And then you're going to place both hands on the bag so that you can switch to the other side and do another one. So on the bell, we're all going to be doing this. But, Tom, if you could just demonstrate one-two and then switch to the other side and one-two. Very good. So that is essentially the exercise. So on the bell, we're going to do that for 30 seconds. Ready? Go. Very good. It's only 30 seconds, so nice and intense. Very good, guys. 10 seconds. Okay guys, now we're going to be doing walking push-ups. So I want you to start off with one hand on the bag and one hand on the mat. You're going to do one push-up and then go to so where the, the bag is in the center of your chest and then do another push-up and then walk to your other hand is on the bag. So they're walking push-ups. Ready? On the bell. Go ahead. In the center, one hand on the bag. Very good. Awesome job. After this, guys, we're going to be doing sit-ups and one-two hammer fists. So one person is going to be holding the bag and anchoring the other person's feet. So let's go ahead and partner up. I'm going to take this tombstone from you, sir, and from you, ma'am. So I'm going to have you guys partner up. One person is anchoring the other person's feet with their knees. So we're going to do a sit-up and then a one-two uh, hammer fist. So let's go ahead and switch to where you guys are facing this way. And you guys are facing sideways. Very good. Okay, so on the bell, one, two, hammer fist. Be sure that you're not just hitting in front of you without rotating your torso. Try to turn into it. Use your abs. On the bell. Go ahead. Very good. Awesome. Breathe with your strikes. Only for 30 seconds. Very good, steady pace. Five seconds. Very good job, guys. Let's go ahead and switch. Stay in the same position, but trade places. We're going to pause the time so we can get a true 30 seconds in. Okay, so we're anchoring our feet to the ground, being sure you have a good grip on those handles. And remember, don't just hit in front of you. Turn your torso. Ready? Go. Very good. Awesome.
Very good. We've got about 10 more seconds of this. After this, we're going to have a tombstone in between our feet, and we're going to be doing V-ups. V-ups. Very good. So I'm going to give this back to you, sir. And you. There we are. So V-ups, guys. So I want you to squeeze the tombstone in between your feet. Do your best to keep your hips in the same position. And you're going to V up and touch the bag with your outstretched arms. So you're not necessarily bending your arms, trying to keep them as straight as you can. This is for a full 30 seconds. So do a, a nice steady pace, uh, not necessarily super fast. On the bell. Go. Now this is extremely difficult. This is something that uh, you're not going to be very good at the first time you do it, but you're going to get better every time you try it. You might drop the bag, that's okay. Just get it reset and keep going. Go at a pace that works for you. Very good technique. It is not easy. Very good. Almost there. And relax. Okay, now I'm going to take two tombstones back from you. Let's have yours and yours. Perfect. And now we're going to partner up for rear kicks. Rear kicks. So you're going to be in a regular stance with the right foot back, hands up, elbows in. Uh, pad holder, uh, let's, ha let's have Matt and Tom demonstrate for us. I want you to be sure to point your toes out towards the kick. So the kick is going to be coming down at a 45 degree angle. Demonstrate that for us lightly, please, Tom. Just like that, so you can start off softly and then build up some intensity as the drill continues. We're going to do this for 30 seconds and then switch. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ready. Go. Very good. It's important that you're bending your knee pad holders. Don't want to keep a straight leg, don't want to hyperextend your knee. Very good. Go ahead and pick up that intensity just a little bit. If you are throwing that right hand back as your right leg moves forward, do try to cross shield your face if you can. Looks great, guys. Very good. And time. Let's go ahead and trade pads. So same thing, guys. The direction that the kick is coming from, I want to point my toes in that direction. Be sure that my knee is bent so it's nice and strong. Get ready and do it on the bell. Let's go. Start off nice and light. Build up some speed, build up some intensity. Very nice, Zach. Very good, Matt. Awesome job. Very nice. Start to pick it up a little bit. Kicking with the bottom hand length of your shin. About the length of your hand right there on your shin. Very good. Awesome. Okay, so our first technique that we're going to be working on today, our first defense, is going to be hair grab defense. Now, obviously, based on the length of your hair, uh, you may or may not have to even worry about this, uh, but sometimes we have a ponytail, and so I wanted to uh, use, use Brandy to demonstrate uh, exactly how to do this, because this is often a question that we get asked, like, yeah, if you have short hair, that's one thing, but if you actually have something that can be grabbed from behind, if you have longer hair, how do you deal with that? Uh, so if I could have Zach and Brandy step forward, please. Uh, Brandy, if I could have you face that way, away from for me. Uh, as Zach grabs her hair, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's kind of counterintuitive because it hurts, but sometimes we want to pull away to alleviate that, like we want to pull the, the hair out of the hand, but we really, the only way to actually alleviate it is to obviously lean back towards the direction uh, that she's being pulled. So uh, a lot of times we like to grab the hand to stop the attacker from pulling even more, uh, but it's really more important that you're moving back into the attacker because we're assuming that if Zach gets punched in the face a couple of times, he's probably going to lose his willpower uh, to continue grabbing her hair. So we're going to do this in slow motion. Brandy can reach back to grab his wrist, uh, but sometimes it ends up being almost like a side clinch anyway. So as she turns in, she begins to hit. Hit, hit, and she's driving in, and then she can even deliver a knee, and then he's probably going to let go. It's probably safe to say that she can disengage from there with her hands up. Very good. So let's demo that one more time. So it's really more important that she leans back and turns in. So as he pulls, boom, boom, boom. Very nice, very nice. So that's what we're going to be working on. Obviously, we have different lengths of hair here. He doesn't really have to worry about this too much, but we're going to practice anyway. Uh, if you don't have any hair, if you're, if you're bald, or if you choose to shave your head, whatever, uh, just place the hand and then just try to manipulate the head so that way you can just move in, grab the hand, and do your combatives from there. So each 
uh, person is going to get to do this for one minute, and then when we hear the bell, we're going to switch. So let's go ahead and kind of find some space on the mat. Go ahead. And on the bell, we're going to do front hair grabs and rear hair grabs. So uh, if you're, if you're the, the person that's being attacked, just close your eyes. We're going to move around a little bit. Okay? On the bell. Let's do it. Very good. So we're placing our hand on the attacker's hand to stop them from being able to pull the hair even more. And it's really about the intensity. It's the, the combatives that gets us out of the woods. Okay, that's about halfway. Let's increase our intensity a little bit. Very good. Awesome. Even if we go for the hand and we miss the hand entirely, as long as we're leaning into the direction that our hair is being pulled and we're violent and aggressive with our strikes, we are going to beat it. Very good. And time. Very nice, guys. Okay, so now the other person's hair is going to be pulled. Uh, just remember, it's important to grab the hand so that they can't pull away, but it's, it's even more important to lean in and, uh, you know, save yourself with the intensity of your counterattacks. On the bill. Pull as hard as you want. Very nice. Usually the harder we pull, the harder they do their defense. Very good. Zach, I like how you're breathing out with every strike. That's awesome. Very good. We're about halfway, so we can pick up the intensity just a little bit. Very nice. All right, about 10 seconds left. Let's get a couple more in. Don't forget we have web strikes, we have hammer fists. Very nice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be working on are a couple of gun defenses. Now, these are both going to be front gun defenses, but we're going to be demonstrating uh, a, basically a, kind of a day one thing that we teach everybody that you see uh, from the white belt all the way to the black belt level, and then one that is just a little bit more advanced, uh, a little bit more specific. So uh, for, the, for the first one, uh, Zach and Brandy, if I could have you guys step forward, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to obviously always adhere to the principles of dealing with the gun. We're going to redirect the gun. We're going to control it. We're going to attack. And then we're going to take away, which is the last priority. So Zach can present the gun uh, really at any level, but we're going to stick to about mid-level or higher uh, just for the sake of this drill. Brandy, put the hands to the level of the weapon. We're going to redirect with a hand that you don't want to hit with. See, it's pointing away from her. Not only is it away from her, but it's almost completely sideways. Now she can attack now that she's redirected it and she's controlling it. She uh, grab underneath. Now she can kick again if she wants to, but she doesn't have to. And now we're going to break and take. Then we got the gun, we're in a high two position. Very good, Brandy. So, if I could have you guys step back over here, please. Uh, the defense that Matt and Tom are going to be demonstrating, uh, this we call this up and over. This one is more specific in the sense that it only works if it's up high and it's close to the forehead. Matt, go ahead and show us up and over. Just like that. So, there, uh, it's, it's a lot faster and it's kind of a direct disarm, but there is quite a bit going on here. So, yeah, Tom, you can demonstrate. Uh, so, the hands are at the level of the weapon. Now, notice it's close to his head. Actually, Tom, get a little bit closer for me, please. Uh, so, it's close to the head and it's also up high. Now, Tom's opposite side hand is going to grab the gun. That's very, very important. The same side hand is going to grab the wrist. He's bringing the butt of the gun or the magazine close to his shoulder so he can bring his elbow up and punch down towards the ground. So, it's kind of a one-step disarm. And now, it's automatically his. Uh, you can step away and get ready to use the gun. Of course, we're not aware if it works or not. You can also use the gun as a weapon. So we're going to be demonstrating those two. I want you to do the one that you're more comfortable with. And then, of course, the next time you do this class, you can do the other one and uh, try to get proficient with both of those. So if you guys could find some space on the mat. I'm going to start the timer here in just a moment. We're going to go back and forth with those gun defenses. Back and forth. 
Go. Very good. Tap and rack. So obviously, especially if it's a semi-automatic, like both of these guns are simulating, uh, if we grab the slide and we grab it firmly, uh, if there's a, a barrel, uh, actually a bullet in the chamber, nothing is going to stop that bullet from coming out. But if it does come out, we're probably going to jam the gun because we're squeezing the slide in such a way that it cannot operate. Very good, guys. Up and over. Very clean, Matt. Very good. Good job, Zach. Hit him hard, Brandy. Boom! Love it. Okay, we're at a minute now, but keep going because we're alternating. So this is a two-minute drill. Yeah. Don't forget we can hit him with a gun to drive into him. Very nice. Awesome job. Got 25 seconds left. Get those good reps in. And time. Next drill, we're going to be working on the side headlock defense as well as the carotid choke defense or the rear naked choke defense that's already sunk in. Uh, so Zach and Brandy, could I have you guys step forward please? I want you guys to demonstrate the side headlock. Uh, so this is somebody coming up from the front or the side, reaching over, and we're going to assume that Zach wants to pull her around. Now in order to catch her balance, she's stepped in front. Now she can reach over and she can pull him back. She's trying to get him to fall back into his own footprint essentially. So as we step forward, don't forget to hit and then we're prying back up. Thank you guys for that demo. And then Matt and Tom, we're going to be demonstrating the rear naked choke. So as Tom sinks in this rear naked choke, Matt has to go, remember, towards the, the arm that's choking him as he turns the U with the shoulder. Very good combatives. All right. So uh, the idea of this drill is I know that it's going to be one of those two attacks, but I don't know which one it's going to be at the time. So I close my eyes. My, de my partner decides which attack they want to do to me and how hard they want to do it, and then I have to react appropriately. So you're supposed to mess up, but if you're consistently messing up, just slow it down a little bit, and then we can build up some speed later. So uh, if I could have you guys find some space on the mat. Uh, let's see, Zach, you're the attacker first, and Tom, you're the attacker first. So choose whichever one you want. Matt and Brandy, go ahead and close your eyes so you don't know which one it's going to be on the bill. Very good. Sometimes they fall over, sometimes they don't. If we did it really, really hard, they would probably fall over every time, but we like our training partners. Very good. Let's turn towards that arm that's choking us. Very good defense, Brandy. Okay, last 20 seconds, pick up the pace just a little bit. I want to see some good intensity. Very nice. Very good, Matt. Awesome. Five seconds left. Get one more in. One more, really fast. Go. Finish it up. Okay, very nice. Awesome. Okay, so now the other person is the attacker. Uh, just remember, we're turning towards the arm that's choking us, and as you take a big step, that should also be accompanied by a groin strike. Ready? Go. Awesome job. 
Ooh. Very good combatives. We're about halfway through. Great groin strike. So in our next drill, we're going to be practicing creating space using defensive kicks. So primarily the front kick, the side kick, and the back kick. Now we're going to take advantage of having uh, three different people besides the person that's in the hot seat. Obviously, if you only have one person, I could get a big pillow or a kick shield, and I could just be circling around my partner so that I could simulate those different those different kicks. Obviously, uh, we're going to have one person in the middle uh, or in the hot seat. Uh, Brandy, I'm going to have you go first. So if I could just stand you, have you stand right there. Uh, so they're going to be circling around her. Now for a side kick, we're going to have to bump into them and then get ready and brace ourselves and be sure that we can handle the hit. From the back, again, we have to bump into her, but from the front, we can just walk towards her. So that way we can also practice our timing. Uh, you know, we're obviously it's a test of depth perception as well. And you know uh, how quickly you need to get your foot up off the ground and smash into that pad. So I'm going to have you guys uh, go ahead and get ready for me. And when you hear the bell, just go ahead and start bumping in, attacking, and she's just going to be kicking. So in and she is in her stance. Boom, very good. Kick hard. Side kick, very nice. Good. Very good. Notice she looked over the same side shoulder of the leg that she used. That's very good. Very nice front kick. Very good. Very nice. Awesome. It's only for 30 seconds. Break. That went by fast, didn't it? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trade out with Matt. So Matt, you're in the hot seat now. So on the timer, we're gonna go through. Good. Good side kick. So we're stopping forward momentum with the front kick, we're creating space with the side kick and with the back kick. Very nice. And time, Tom trade out. Go! Good. Notice sometimes they're getting a little bit too close before they realize they're creating a little bit of space with their hands and then they're stomping. That's perfectly acceptable. Very good. And time. Zach. Let's do it. Very good. Very good. Don't give him very much time to rest. Let's really press him for the last five seconds. We like being mean to Zach, so we're going to press him really hard. So now we're going to do a what we call a self-defense circle. So we're going to have one person in the center. They're going to be standing there. Uh, you can have your eyes closed, but most of the time we go ahead and have our eyes open so we can see uh, what's coming. As they're walking around, the, each individual is just going to choose whatever they want to do, however they want to attack that person. Obviously, the only stipulation here is we don't have weapons. So we can obviously make this massively dynamic by giving uh, one or two people a, a gun, a fake gun, or one or two people a fake knife. 
uh, we're going to do an empty handed attack self defense circle. If you only have one partner to work with at home, obviously uh, you can turn on some music so you can't necessarily hear them around you. You can close your eyes and that partner, partner can walk around you and then attack you. Uh, it's, it's very similar to the same thing. Basically by having more people, we give them less time to rest because we have a fresh person that's immediately coming in to attack them. Uh, so Tom, if I could have you in the middle first and the rest of you, I want you to just continuously walk around Tom and just attack him in any way that you want to after you hear the bell. Let's do it. Very good. So we just want a reaction and we want it fast. Very nice. Very good, Tom. Awesome. Nice. Very good job. Boom! Okay, Matt, you're in the middle. Let's do it. Attack Matt. However you want to. <laughs> there, that happens. That's okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Very good. Very good defense. Very nice. Recognizing the attack and reacting appropriately. All right, Zach, you're in the middle. Go ahead. Good job immediately attacking, Matt. Good job. Good job. Don't give him much time to rest. Let's do this. Very good. Very good. It's only 30 seconds, lots of intensity. Five more seconds. Let's get him, let's get him. Very good. Brandy, you're in the middle. Don't give her much time to rest, let's do this. Recognize what it is, very good, very good. Okay, let's stand in base, very good. Very nice, very nice. Go with it, go with it, yes. Very good. Shoulder break. Very nice. Good intensity. And time. Okay, so we like to end our classes with just a fun game. We call it the end game. Uh, so we're going to be doing the scissor sweep. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Uh, Zach and Brandy, if I could have you guys step forward here. So one person is going to be in the other person's closed guard. So if I could have you guys get to that position, please. So if Zach is in Brandy's closed guard, Brandy's goal is to scissor sweep Zach. So it's a way that we can sweep and get on top. Go ahead and show us what a scissor sweep looks like really quick. Just controlling the posting arm, get all the way to your hip. Boom. Very good. So it's like a round kick with the top leg and a hook kick with the bottom leg to sweep them over. Very good. Now, what I'm going to have Tom and Matt demonstrate, if I could have you guys get up here. Uh, we're going to make it a little bit more difficult here. This is a, a slightly like an intermediate version of this, basically. Uh, Tom, being on top or, or being upright, is going to try to be palm striking Matt in the forehead. And so Matt has to swim through his strikes, break down the posture, and then do it. So the game here is that you know that you're going to be scissor swept, but you're going to try to stop your partner from scissor sweeping you. Uh, and, and the more advanced version of this drill is not only are we going to try to have good base and have a good center of gravity, try to stop our partner from scissor sweeping us, we're also going to be striking them a little bit just to, just to make it that much more difficult. An open hand palm that's just done lightly to the forehead should not hurt at all. Uh, so it's not a big deal. We're just swimming through the strikes. We're obtaining uh, sort of like a, a half, half of a full clinch on their neck and then grabbing the arm. Now, whichever way I want to sweep them, I need to grab that side arm because that would be the arm that they would post with to stop me from doing that. So let's go ahead and find some space on the mat. This is not a time drill. It's just a game. We're just going to kind of make it difficult for each other. So we're all going to be trying to sweep that way. All right, ready and go. Have fun with it. Don't let her do it. Don't let her do it. Get up. Oh, see, you got to your hip and then you did it. That was awesome. Reset. Same person. This really 
emphasizes uh, doing the technique properly. If you're trying to sweep somebody and you're still on your back, you know, it's going to remind you to get to your hip and then you can do it. Or if you're forgetting to, to grab their arm, to overhook their arm, or somehow take their arm out of the equation so that they can't post and stop you, it's going to remember, oh yeah, I need to grab that arm. Get all the way on your side, Brandy. Very good. Get that arm, Matt. Very good, very good. Okay, one more time. One more time each. Let's do it fast. Very good. Awesome. Okay, now the other person. So we can obviously play this for as long as we want to. Uh, just a fun way to end the class. Very good, Zach. Good job, Tom. You can stop your partner from scissor sweeping you by keeping your knees wide and trying to keep your posture or staying upright. Good job breaking down his posture, Tom. Very nice. Let's try this several more times. Get that posting arm up and he pushed the knee. That was very good. Awesome job. One more time. Get, it, get his forehead, get his forehead, get him. Very good, Zach. Overhook that arm, beautiful. All right, guys, let's everybody stand up. Very good job, that was a fun end game.